at a certain point, there's a crossover where you start to see doors open. You've built up a little bit of flexibility. You're doing things you care about. You're on top of your finances. And that just feels good. Out of high school, you're probably just going to start getting some credit cards. And then it snowballs from there. You know, you, you rack up the credit card bills and then it's a, a, some gargantuan car loan or a mortgage. And then it becomes like, OK, well, now I'm spending two grand every single month just to keep on top of my debt payments. And it's like if you could have that two grand every single month to do something else, the possibilities that are open to you, it's huge. But hey, health junkies, on this episode of the Health Fix podcast, I'm interviewing Jenna Rose Finney. She is a financial coach and she happens to be my financial coach. And, you know, we got to talking about what I was going through with my nervous system and its relationship to my finances and what would happen when I would think about finances and looking at bank accounts and things of that nature. And I would almost go on freeze mode and avoidant mode. I started thinking there's a connection to health and finances. And so I decided it was time to bring Jenna Rose on so that she could share with you folks some tips and tricks of how to help really ease the stress on the finances and what she's doing with folks um, by coaching them and how she helped me to save over $1,000 a month by just giving me some really easy tips that, you know, they seem so easy, but I wouldn't have seen it without her guidance. So if you're constantly playing catch up with your finances and you feel like maybe a lot of your thoughts are being taken up by your finances, this episode is for you. So let's introduce you to Jenna Rose Finney. Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Jenna Rose Finney, welcome to the Health Fix Podcast. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, you guys. Like I had to have Jenna Rose on because of how much she changed my life in such a short time. And I was like, look, finance is not something I talked about on the podcast much, but I was like, I think it is such a huge impact on your health that we need to talk about these things. So Jenna Rose, we are going to dive in deep today. First and foremost, I love to tell stories about how folks got into their profession. So a financial coach or finances coach. I don't know which way you prefer me to say it, but I'm just going to say, how did, how did you end up in this space? It was kind of a long, it's kind of been a long path. So mm -hmm. I started, um, and back in high school, I took financial literacy. And when I got into the workforce later, I learned that nobody else had that class. So I found myself just kind of working with people, like teaching people what a 401k was, walking people through like just the financial statements for the businesses we were working at, that kind of thing. Because like I knew how to analyze that. I knew what it was saying without freezing up. So that was that was a step. And then I eventually went into um, wealth management. I was working in wealth management for about seven years before I started this project. And I found myself working with some clients that really had a hard time even facing their bank account. Like they didn't want to look at it. They had never budgeted before. And that wasn't something that the financial advisors really did. That wasn't something they worked with. So I kind of found myself doing that sort of on the side with some of the clients. And I connected with a career coach a year ago. And she was like, have you ever heard of financial coaching? It's like, no. She's like, you're doing this all the time. You can get paid to do this. I was like, what? like so I hard. started to just shell the business, see, took some classes. I went through um, Dave Ramsey's financial coach master training hmm. um, just, just to get an idea like what, what does coaching really look like? It was, is this really what I'm doing? Is there a framework? So I did that. I talked to some people already in the field who had been successful and built built this little business about a year ago. And it's been great. I really love it. It's probably the most rewarding job I've ever had. Oh, my goodness. Well, you've definitely made an impact on, on my life. And guys, like I was introduced to Generals from Selena Sue just as a bonus for signing up for uh, Kate Northrop's program. And I love Kate. Her program's great. What well, you and I have been working together, like, so much more impactful because it's the one-on-one -on -one where we get to talk about, like, what 
what my issues were <laughs> with my finances. So one of the big things that I'm sure you see with a lot of your clients is anxiety. Like you said, I don't even want to look at my bank account or people tell me like, I'm not good with money. And it's not something like a doc really talks with people about. But now that I've worked with you, I've kind of like brought it up with people like stress in your life, finances, anything going on. And people, it's it's impressive. Like I thought I was alone in this world with my finance issues. I didn't want to tell anyone that it was like clueless. So pretty common, huh? But all the time. And I think <laughs> Because people don't talk about it, people tend to think it's worse than it really is. And that weighs down on, I mean, that has a ripple effect, right? Because it's not just the finances at that point. It's the way you're living your life because you're holding something in. Like, that's not healthy. That bleeds out in so many different ways. The way you treat people, the way you treat yourself, your own physical well-being at a certain point. Oh my gosh. Like one of the things I'm sure you see a lot with with a lot of folks who are in debt or struggling with trying to make their ends meet, they just keep trying, they're skimping, right? They're they're trying to to hold so much, like you said, holding in, but also like holding themselves back from joy in life because they're like, I just gotta get this stuff paid. I just gotta get this stuff paid. Yeah. And I think it's important to carve out a little bit of money to do something fun, do something that's important for you. It doesn't have to just be um, a punishment. You know, money, money is not about money. It's about what you do with it. Right. So you want to obviously prioritize towards your, the things you need, you know, your survival and your financial health and the, the growth pattern. But if you're not at least living in the moment somewhat, you're, you're going to feel like you're punishing yourself and that's not good either. I think that was one of the things really for me that you were you were kind of highlighting because, of course, you know, full full disclosure here, folks, I had some troubles with COVID and my business going from four, three, four acupuncture visits an hour down to one person an hour and then staff and trying to finance everybody was tough. And so I did accumulate a little bit of debt and I was, you know, really embarrassed about that, but also trying to figure out what do I do? do with this stuff? You know, how do I pay it? And so, yeah, my husband and I figured out how to live on like bare bones and like not have very much fun. And that was where you really taught me like, hey, why don't you think about paying the debt in different gradations and figure this out this way where you have some some money going for fun? Yeah, the debt snowball strategy. That's that's a big one. I think what you look there's so many different financial influencers out there that say different things, but at the end of the day, what is the most financially sound decision to pay off your debt isn't necessarily the most realistic as a human being. So being able to just you know, step one, sort your debt from smallest to largest, pay off that smallest balance. And then once you have that ba first balance paid off, you have what you were paying on that as new flexibility. You can put that whole amount towards the next debt. Sometimes what I like to do with people is carve out a little portion of that and put that in like a slush fund, like do something fun, <laughs> but continue on the, on the snowball path and it'll go away so much faster than if you try to do it in these huge chunks all at once. It's just, that's how I got out of debt personally as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely helping. I'm definitely getting closer on on one of my cards every month where we're getting there. And it feels good because you see the number going down. And of course, at the same time, you kind of panic a little bit because in your mind, you know, we've got that programming like I should be paying all these off. I should be paying all these off right now. And realistically, it's too, you know, it's it's hard when you're you're you have a lot to to work with there. Yeah, it, it, I don't think it makes sense to just prioritize debt. And then you also have to factor in the savings piece too. If you're just continuously pri prioritizing debt, well, what happens when you need an ER visit or you, your car breaks down or, you know, whatever thousand dollar emergency that may be, you need to put some money aside as well so that those doors are open and that's going to make you feel a lot better. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people, you know, We've been at least my generation, and, and you're in the same you know boat here. Our generation of of the forty plus crew, the thirty five. Let's go thirty five plus crew. Even I would say, you know, us folks have been taught like you know, pay your debts off. Don't, don't get in debt, you know, and then you scrimp to do whatever you can just to get out of that mode. And then it ends up really taking a toll of anxiety to look at 
your bills, you know, anxiety to look at your your bank accounts, things of that nature. Have you found in working with folks that like you see a difference in their demeanor in the time frame that you've worked with them from paying debts off slowly, feeling more confident in in their finances? Yes, absolutely. Um, and it shows up differently for everybody. But at a certain point, there's a crossover where you start to see doors open. You've built up a little bit of flexibility. You're doing things you care about. You're on top of your finances. And that just feels good. So everybody's, you know, everybody's different. But I, I'll tell you, I was just talking to a client the other day and she was like, every time I talk to you, I feel like I can go and conquer the world after. So I need to talk to you and then go to my job interview. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so I thought that was fun but she like had just had that crossover she had paid down like a couple small debts had a little bit of savings that was in a high yield so it was growing a little bit and she's like I've got stuff in motion like this is good and that just it just makes such a difference Every, everybody's different oh my gosh well the fact that you had a financial literacy class I'm like looking back at high school and going like we never had anything like that. My financial literacy was my parents were like, hey, we got you a bank account. Here's how to balance a, a checkbook, which was great, right? And then yeah. came debit cards and then came credit cards. And then my system was just have enough money in your bank account. And so if you screw up on the math, you got it covered, which is not is not the way to go. It's not the way to go. Unfortunately, it's, it's the norm in our society, though. I think everybody at some point in their lives accumulates some sort of debt. Um, it's just it's so baked into our culture that it's really hard to get away from that. So, yeah, if you didn't have a financial literacy course in high school, which I think everybody should, um, but unfortunately, that's not the case right now, then out of high school, you're probably just going to start getting some credit cards and then it snowballs from there. You know, you you rack up the credit card bills and then it's a, a, some gargantuan car loan or a mortgage. And then it becomes like, OK, well, now I'm spending two grand every single month just to keep on top of my debt payments. And it's like if you could have that two grand every single month to do something else, the possibilities that are open to you, it's huge. But I, I don't want people to beat themselves up for accumulating debt either because mm. it, it is unfortunately baked into our culture. Yeah. You know, I think I think the shaming of debt is one of the things why I never really reached out to anyone trying to figure out, you know, what to do, how to to figure this out, because like, oh, my God, if my dad ever knew, like, <laughs> right, like my, yeah. I get back to like 12 years old, you know, like I'm going to be grounded for <laughs> for months for for this, you know, and, you know, honestly, you and I had talked about it, I had never had any issues till COVID. And so that was just so so hard for me. I was like, I had this down until I didn't have it down. And, and it really kind of set me up for knowing that like, oh my gosh, I really need to prioritize things better and really learn this and, and understand the flow of money. Now, one of the things I will hear from clients a lot is like, yes, I'm stressed for with finances and, and yes, mortgages, car payments, things of that nature. Now it's like, you, you, we live in a society where we've got high mortgage rates. We've got people who are living in, you know, where I practice in Tacoma, Washington. It is astronomical to have a home in a place that, you know, yes, it's beautiful, but oh my gosh, you know, if I went back now after selling my house, I couldn't buy a house there at this point. And so a lot of people are living a little bit like house poor, as, as a lot of people will say to me, and they'll be like, I can't really afford supplements, or I can't really afford a lot to take care of my health, which now we've got a big issue going on in terms of needs. And this is where something I'd love to hear your case in terms of, like you said, the health fund, the slush fund, or even like prioritizing for healthcare needs that maybe an FSA, if they have something like that, like a health savings account or, or something like that. How do you coach folks on saving for health care kind of needs or things that are of interest for health? I think, and I, I know this answer gets old, but every single person is different. Right. So I think the first question is like, let's just say they don't have any savings. Right. You know, what does an ER visit look like in your area? Let's at least make sure you can cover that. Because um, a full emergency fund for the average person, you're talking 
three to six months of living expenses, that's going to be typically around $30,000. That seems like a big bite. So I like to do it in chunks, you know, let's cover an ER visit. Let's cover, you know, what else do you need in your life? You know, for some people going to the gym every day makes a huge difference. So, you know, pay, carve out from your surplus and your income to cover, cover the gym. If, um, if it's, and then getting into groceries, you know, get, or, get organic food. Let's talk through budgeting around eating well. It's, it's absolutely something you can do. Um, so I, I think, I think it's just combing through the needs mm -hmm. and then setting aside that money in in small chunks and then be, you know, going into getting into it. Like we had just talked about buying a house and stuff. I think I, I would probably try to encourage someone to hold on buying a house until they have these buckets set up, you know, that door is open to take care of your health. You have that, that fund set aside already. You've got your debt, your credit card debt paid off so that you can just go into this house and not have to sacrifice any of those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's hugely important. And I think for a lot of people and, and, and like me too, we, you and I sat down and we created a plan right? We recreated like the needs and Kate Northrop also had like the wants and needs thing. And, and so you and I kind of went off of that and we were like, okay, what's, you know, realistic. And I think for a lot of people listening, they might be thinking like, where do I even start? Is this where most people would start or where do you, where do you have folks start? So it typically, Typically, I just start talking about finances and like their history with money as a mm -hmm. starting point, especially for that person that doesn't want to look at their bank account. Like, let's just have a conversation. Let's talk about your history with money. What are your earliest money memories? Fast forward to first paycheck, maybe. And how, you know, what what were the first steps you did with that? OK, let's fast forward to today. What what are your first steps when you receive money and just identify some habits and you can, and I use um, money habitudes as well. I, I really love their assessment. Nice. So I'll, st that um, opens a door of just conversation. You can get a lot out of that. You know, what their natural relationship with money is, what they might need to be saving for, where their priorities really lie, what their core values are. And then from there, okay, well, we've already talked about money a little bit. Let's just take that first step in building a plan and for me and my process, that's a needs analysis. So what is mandatory in your life? Probably rent or a mortgage, healthcare costs, of course, um, groceries, utilities, probably the internet, you know, what is the bare bones? You cannot live without these things. Okay, what's left over from your income at that point? And then let's sort out and these are all in totally different sessions so that we're not doing everything all at once. We're not trying to burn anybody out, but we get into that second session where we're prioritizing the discretionary spending. Okay, what is something that you really like to do all the time? Well, for some people, it's going out to dinner once a week. For some people, it's going to a concert once a month. You know, every, everybody's got different stuff. So we prioritize those things. And then you have this really nice at a glance view. Okay, if I need to cut costs, it's these bottom things that go first. So your, your values are met. And then we have to find some surplus after that point and allocate towards savings goals, paying down debt, all those things. And if you comb through it one step at a time, it feels a lot easier. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I one of the things you were saying when you're kind of going through it, and and I know I kind of alluded to it earlier, is is budgeting for your fun and things you do enjoy because that way it's built into your plan versus yes. a, like whimsical, like, Hey, we just did this and Oh crap, I didn't budget for it. And I think that health wise once it was almost like you gave me permission, <laughs> you know, when we were talking, like you gave me permission to be like, Hey, why don't you live your life a little bit instead of not spending on anything that you enjoy. And I think for a lot of people, that's eye-opening because when we think, oh, I'm not going on a budget, we think like fun's over. You know, it's almost mm -hmm. like being grounded financially. Yeah. And I've even tried to, I'm I'm not 100% there yet, but I'm trying to even take the word budget yeah. out of my vocabulary with clients because that has become a term of just 
this feels punishing and restrictive and horrible, but it's, so I've kind of been shifting towards, let's build a plan. Let's make a spending plan. Let's see what doors are open for you. Let's have some fun with this. Let's be creative. And finance has absolutely become a creative outlet for me. And I try to pass that on to, to my clients. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You like did a whole deep dive into all the different areas where I could save money and like instantly saved me. Like when I added up, it's almost like a thousand dollars a month in my business, just in terms of things. Yeah. uh, Of like random things. And even more guys, she kind of had me thinking about like, how could I call people and, and find different plans and different things. And I ended up with my electronic health record system. I ended up calling them and saying, hey, I'm spending this on a flex plan based on how many invoices we send out, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm on the lower end for a low volume. Do you have a low volume plan? And they were like, yeah. And so I'm saving now almost a hundred dollars just there alone too, in addition to other things. And so it you inspired me to think differently about all of the different programs and then consolidating too, because we had talked about my email program and things too. So guys, I know that this doesn't relate to everybody, but I want you to be thinking about like how can you consolidate things or find a better deal or like I called Verizon because that was one of my biggest um money <laughs> spends on all ah. different phones and they were like oh well we can do this kind of a plan and that saves you this and it's like they're not gonna call you and tell you they got a deal yeah, they're <laughs> not i checked they won't um <laughs> i'll tell you some of the best it, uh, probably the best advice i've ever received i was getting my first ever retail management job and the boss at my last job said ask questions question everything don't just ride things out and expect things to work out. You should a- always ask questions. And that stuck with me. Like, I know she just meant it in a retail management what context, but that has bled into everything related to finance. You know, um, even people with high credit card interests, just just call the credit card company. Is Is there anything else they can do? Worst case, you're in the same boat you're in. Just ask, just ask the question. And when you're, it, you know, um, I work with a lot of small business owners. Well, let's take a look at the tech stack. What else is out there? Is is there a way to consolidate? Is there a free version of X, Y, or Z? And I, I that really just like made my heart jump for joy when you said you'd say you're saving about a thousand a month. Like that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It. I mean, it's you don't think about it because you're like, I need the email. You know company to send help out send out the emails i need this to consolidate to send my courses out i need this you know and the next thing you know when you put it all together you're like oh there's programs i can use to consolidate all of this and make it cheaper you know and you don't think about it because you're blind to it when you're you're in your own world right like you're you're doing your things you need someone to look outside it's kind of it's why i i invest in coaches because it helps me to think outside of the box Yeah. And I think it's also really important to reflect on how you learn, you know, like for um, what's one of the first questions I ask people is how do you learn? And I try my best to cater to everybody, but for everybody who is a hands-on learner, work with a coach. It is going to make such a difference to have somebody just to be an accountability buddy, someone to kind of hold your hand through processes, share ideas that maybe you hadn't thought of. Um, I, I think that's, huge. And you it's very hard to get that from reading a book or attending a webinar because it's not specific to you. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's what we found with the Dave Ramsey stuff. I mean, it was like our relatives were talking about it. We're like, well, my brother-in-law and we were like, oh, okay. You know, but I, I watched some of this stuff, learned some things, but yeah, just working with you, it was so much better because I could understand like, this is why I want to look at this. This is why I want to tweak this. This is why I want to be thinking about this. It's just another eyes where, you know, a lot of us, I think get lost in the wheeze and freeze and just do nothing. Yeah. And that's a very real thing. I went to um, a couple courses with the financial therapy association. That was something they talked about a lot was um, that freeze response and how trauma looks different for everybody. Like it doesn't have to be a violent episode. For some people, it is just dealing with their finances and they get to a point where they freeze up as if they're accounting a a bear in the woods. Right, 
Right. And I think I definitely would say that out of all of the places where my nervous system shows up, it was around money quite a bit. And, you know, we talk a lot about cortisol in the health space. We talk about a lot about fight or flight response and vagus nerve response. Mm -hmm. But I, I have found that for a lot of people, yeah, the like freeze, avoid, you know, run away, <laughs> like flight yeah. and full effect. Absolutely. It can, it can be tough for a lot of people. And the thing is, is it's really like an abscess tooth, right? If you don't deal with it, it's going to grow and grow and grow and get so much worse. If, you know, if it is a bad situation, say it's dead or um, maybe it's reaching a point where it's defaulting and going to a collections agency. And, you know, when you get to that point, it's a, a really easy fix to just call, just make the phone call and start asking questions. But so many people won't do that. And then it just bleeds out, bleeds out, bleeds out. Well, I, I mean, I, I can totally understand, right? Because there's so much shame involved in in getting yourself into a pickle with with money. And there's also just that, you know, stigma, et cetera. But at the same time, you, you have a great solution. Just ask. I mean, same with health, right? Ask questions, ask questions, keep asking questions. Yeah. And, and, you know, you guys, she had me asking questions even to, you know, my creditors and, and credit card companies and asking like, like she said, can you, can you get a better rate? And what ended up happening is I ended up being able to downgrade my credit cards to a zero um, fee, like zero annual fee. They wouldn't let me get a decreased percentage rate, which sucks, but whatever. I was able to at least like knock out the the annual fee and downgrade my 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 points or whatever I was getting from hotels or credit. But what's that's a win. I'll take it. <laughs> right. I know. I was like, well, that's better than nothing. I will totally take that. So it's one of those things where you never know, you, you know, you have options. It's just a matter of asking. And, and this is where some of the things um, that I really see with the nervous system and, and health, how much of this is intersecting in terms of people's outward health. If we're freezing with the finances, we're freezing and, and nervous system is going nuts and we don't feel like we have a handle on it. I feel like we do tend to, once, once we get a handle on things, we do tend to feel better. Hey, Hell Junkies, wanted to tell you about my pal, Dr. Anna Marie Frank's supplement line that specifically targets the needs of women. From anxiety to depression to getting focused and balancing those hormones, as well as helping with sleep, she's got you covered. Plus, she has teas, Two, this day and age, it's hard to know what supplement companies are up to when it comes to sourcing and quality. That's why I love to get to know company owners. Dr. Anna Marie has created formulas that combine what I would do if I owned a supplement and tea company. So wanted to tell you about them. As a listener of the Health Fix podcast, you can get 10% off your order by using the code D-R-J-K-R-A-U-S-E when you head to happyholeyou.com. Now, say you're driving or out on an adventure and you're not going to remember where to find this website. That's okay. My favorite products are all on my website at drjkrausnd.com. Just click on shop and you'll find everything I stand behind and use myself right there. So let's get back to the podcast. You know, are you managing your money because it's going to do the things that you personally want it to do for you? Or are you trying to keep up with those around you? And I think that's something that happens way too often. Even though we don't really talk about finance, people see the things that other people are buying. You know, maybe it's a nice car or nice clothes or whatever, or they just got like the house of their dreams. You don't, you don't know what kind of debt that person's accumulating and you don't know what that person needs. I mean, do you want the big fancy house and the nice car? Is, is that really going to bring you joy? Or is it the ability to go to a concert once in a while or go out to dinner once a week or, you know, whatever that fun thing is for you? Everybody is different. Everybody has their own financial story. And I think it's really important to reflect on who you are, what your values are, and make your own story that's true to you. Mm -hmm. Such wise advice. I think that is very common for a lot of people. Um, 
I don't necessarily fall into that, but you, you think about it, right? You're, Cause you'll see someone that's got like a brand new car and like, check it out. It's got like this new car. And you know, and, and I'm sitting here like, I love my 2007 FJ cruiser. I love that <laughs> so much. Like I wouldn't want any, like, I don't want a new car. Right. And so you think about it and you're like, but, but I guess I should have one. Cause everyone else does. But at the same time, you know, I know financially, like not a good idea for me, but at the same time, I think a lot of people will think just like that thought in the back of their head, even though it's not like a heck yes, I need this kind of thing. I think a lot of people do that. Same thing with probably clothes and purses and God knows what else. I don't know. Everybody's got their vices, but right. it's it's important to just, just be you. Yeah. So huge. So huge. Jenna Rose, let's tell folks where they can find you and how they can learn more about you and, and work with you. Because I think at this point, we've given them so many ways that they can help um, just have their nervous system be more calm when it comes to finances and really help guys in, in the long run um, with your fight or flight nervous system response. So give them your website, where they can find you, how they can work with you. Um, so my website actually just launched last week. It's fincoach.biz, F-I-N-C-O-A-H-O-A-C-H.biz. Um, and you can book, anybody can go on there and book a free consultation. My calendar is posted. Nice, nice. And then from there, you've got packages, you've got all kinds of different options for folks too, correct? Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I shape the plan to everybody individually. So I tend to do my pricing and bundle bundle packages and then we can we can shape it however the person needs from there perfect and then of course guys like she gives so much education and and dives in like you get you get a good email like where she spent a couple days looking at your stuff and going like this is what you could do this week and then like oh so much value. I can't recommend you enough, John Rose. You've really changed my life and helped me to have less stress. You've saved me money. You've saved me from freaking out about finances. And really, honestly, out of everything, you've really taught me how to look at money as a as a flow, right? And And how to just bring it in, put it to places and give it a job. And that's at the end of the day, soothes my, my nervous system because I'm like, it just has a job. That's all it is. Doesn't yeah. mean anything. It has a job. Your money's working for you. And I think that's the best outcome I could ask for. So awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing your tips. And I know in the future, I, as, as we work together, I'll probably have you back on of some of the other weird things that we deal with in terms of me and my my financial um, stuff so that we can share with folks, you know, what other things might come up in terms of your nervous system and finances and how to really work through them. Absolutely. And thank you so much for having me. I'd love to come back anytime. My pleasure. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, fellow health junkie. Thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.